the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Have a roll call. Mayor Hassler. Here. Alderman Smith. Here. Alderwoman Johnson. Here. Alderman Donovan. Here. Alderman Jokerst. Here. Alderman Eidman. Here. Alderman Rainey. Here. Alderman Prince. Here. Alderwoman Armbruster. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Very good. We need to move for approval of the agenda. All in favor? Aye. All right. That takes us down to our city administrator's report. So item one on your report, because I do have an updated one at your seats. Uh, it talks about the street repaving program for 2021. Mm -hmm. I gave you a copy of the streets that we had approved at our budget hearing uh, back last August. So I just wanted you to be aware of the streets that we will be looking at, uh, getting prices on. Uh, we'll put it out for bid next Wednesday, and then we will open bids on Thursday, April 28th. So does that mean two and a half or three inches? Depends on the thickness of the pavement. What we looked at is uh, usually a two inch pavement ends up being two and a half because of what they have to do to get the crown in the, in the, in the asphalt. Uh, so we just listed it as two and a half or three. Um, and the three will be a, a thicker. We figure on the, the, the busier streets, I wanted to put the thicker pavement on. If it's a side street that's just residential, I didn't want to do anything more than, than two. So I mean, what we bid that is options or how no 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 what we just, what we determined was these are the this is what we wanted them to be these are the thicknesses we were shooting for on those roads so does that also mean the streets that are on here that aren't approved they'll have priority next time yeah we'll look at them again uh you know especially like fourth street would probably be on next year's if we couldn't do the whole thing yeah we put it on next year's uh lynn drive little rock um the port, I mean, we're doing the port this year, the park house lot, yeah. And then we've got, we just, we, we just did our tour, and there's a number of other streets that we need to do as well, so. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. surprised. I can't believe it. Safe, that's all. <laughs> oh, yeah, you like that. There's a couple, though. Uh, the park house lot get used that much. Yeah. Yeah. The um, ICMA had a, a program on a, the American Relief Plan. A uh, number of the uh, uh, department heads were there to watch. We didn't really find out anything in particular more than what's out there now. Uh, we hope to find out more in the future. Uh, the uh, Treasury's working on the details, uh, but we can start talking about it at our next meeting. So we'll do that during our work session. Uh, there's specifics that are included in it. They're fairly vague, like water sewer broadband. <coughs> Doesn't give anything more than that. So we'll probably talk about water sewer projects that we would want to do. Uh, Lincoln and has the health insurance numbers ready. Um, trying to get our committee together. I'd like to do that on uh, Monday the 5th, it looks like, uh, of April. So it'll be in a, in a, little, over, a little over a week. Um, get our committee together, find out what those numbers are, and then bring back a recommendation to the board to approve. <clears throat> uh, vaccination plan opening up in April. Um, with that happening and with the numbers going down on active cases, I would like to take away or remove the mandatory face mask requirement inside City Hall uh, when we have guests or visitors here, I'll make it optional. Uh, if the things change, the numbers go back up because there's that possibility. I would uh, rescind that idea, uh, but it gives us another month to kind of see how things go, uh, people getting vaccinations. Uh, I hate to say I've been to meetings now where there's nobody wearing a mask, so some people have already taken that to heart. Uh, but just so you know what I'm, what I'm considering. But you know, with the national numbers that, you know, we're hearing out there, only 60% of the population, you know, plus or minus getting vaccinated, I mean, uh, that's still a huge number of people that haven't been. I think after or that isn't going to get vaccinated. And, and there's going to be a certain amount of people that will not get vaccinated. I know several of them. You know, so I, my my and my thought on that is at, at April 9th, I understand that it's open vaccination. Right. So uh, it'll give us a good look in the 30th. And 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 for me, once that happens for a while, and I wear I still I'm vaccinated, but I wear my mask because I was told that it, I could give it to somebody else, but. 
if somebody's not going to be vaccinated, I'm not going to wear the mask. I'm going to quit after a certain time where everybody, now surely I'll adjust that if, if somebody hadn't had an opportunity, but if, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to get the vaccine. And we'll still afford the opportunity for them to have masks available if they come yeah, in, right? So sure. the opportunity is for them to still wear it. Right. You know, with all these variants popping up now and stuff, I don't have any confidence that we know all of the issues and all the solutions yet. I mean, I, well, no. I'm sure we don't. Yeah. I think we need to, but you know, think, take that, that under, you know, a uh, very close eye watching that and stuff before we do. I was just going to say, I, I think the, you know, the April 30th date gives us some time to really see what's what's going on. We, we can get a lot of new information in the next oh, yeah. mm -hmm. month. So, yeah. Yeah. He, I, you're just throwing it out there so we can kind of be aware, right? You're trying to give us a start date to look at to yeah. to, good. to move past this and, yeah. and get back to some, some sort of normal. Yeah, and it's April 21st or whatever, it's things are going mm -hmm. in the wrong direction. They right. right. Yeah. And we still have two meetings in between that we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So just gonna check that. Uh, that's all I got. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you for our staff reports. Uh, Keith Bennett. Good. I don't have anything terribly exciting to report. Um, a little later on the agenda is the discussion with the building uh, proposals. We did get the bids back in on that. <clears throat> uh, but I would imagine we'll just talk about that at that time. Um, have some guys off in training. Uh, we did get our computers, uh, the MDTs for the assistant chief and myself approved through a grant. Uh, they've arrived and are being implemented as we speak. So, um, other than that, I don't think I have anything unless anybody has any specific questions. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're doing doing well on that, and uh, everybody seems to be doing well. And we did have a uh, had a, had an opportunity to have a meeting with Eric and uh, one of our, our ward one. We're having a problem. On Hay Street, with some drug activity, mm -hmm. and had a, a citizen that come to the come to me first, then had a meeting, and there's a there's some rental property and some activity going on down there, and, a, and the police have been on it. It's just, and they're talking about uh, Amy Dobbs is here. She's talking about doing a neighborhood watch, which I thought was a good idea in any neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, because that's the problem. Nobody wants to say anything, you know. So, and then there's things that I believe that we can do. Uh, that'll come up here a we'll little look, look later on to help the situation. I mean, Eric's already doing it, so. Mm -hmm. but, and then there's some other neighborhoods we have spots where that happens, too, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Wilson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, so everybody has my report. You'll notice in there the UV system at the uh, wastewater treatment plant has been put into service and has been test running for a few weeks now. Um, the UV disinfection season starts April 1st. So it gives us a chance to run the equipment prior to uh, disinfection season, make sure everything's working properly uh, and we're not gonna have any, any issues. Um, there's some locations that'll start them up on April 1st and then they just find out they have a ton of problems. So uh, we try to head that off. Uh, other stuff going on we got cochran engineering they have done the site work um, and they've begun to lay the lines out on the drawings for the uh, for the water line project on on north fourth street um, everything's going on schedule they're looking for um, i believe the contract said uh, a july start date so it, it's a fairly short quick stretch um, shouldn't take very long to do really um, Yes. Yeah, we're that one's on schedule to get done just prior to the paving. So good. Um, last month we had a few leaks, uh, some really cold leaks. Uh, lots of residents that had uh, frozen lines in their house, lots of busted lines. Uh, we were very busy tending to those uh, as they came up. Um, but all in all, everything everything went pretty well. So. I saw in your report you're still dealing with the rags out on Riverview. 
yes. or in progress parkway yeah it's uh it's slowly it got a little better uh it's not completely better um we're only going out there about two to three times a week instead of four or five um i did have a meeting with them uh they they've agreed to put in like a bar screen type system to catch the rags on their property before it leaves their premises um they have a meeting with a couple contractors that are going to do a like a little design build project for them and get it complete um, and we've had a staff meeting uh, we had a meeting with the staff out there um, they're all seeming very cooperative and trying to get to a solution uh, but we're we're not completely there yet okay so you know that problem causes more problems down the way yes you know. how much time do you put into having to do that it takes about two to three hours to pull the pumps out there and you got to get uh, you got to get the excavator back there you got to pull it and then you got to get the jetter back there to power wash and clean the area up um, sometimes we got to unwire the pump and the floats and and get the pumps out of the hole i mean they're they're 15 feet in the ground so it's it's all hands on deck and it it takes some time is that something that we can build for That's why we want them to correct it up front. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we had figured with the equipment, if you were to figure up the re equipment cost, the rental cost of equipment, if you had to do it, uh, manpower's insurance benefits, everything. Um, I mean, with the equipment, I mean, you're looking close to $1,500 a trip. And how many times you do if, that? if you were going to bring a contractor in to do it, you know, but. We've been dealing with this for a better part of a year now. So, so we've spent a considerable amount of money. We've spent a considerable amount of time out there, yeah. Right. So. The biosafe seem to be working? The biosafe is used to control the grease in the lift station, and, and yes, it's absolutely working. Um, once we got the grease under control in the lift station, uh, we were able to dial the chemical back further and further. Um, so the chemicals lasting longer, but yeah, it does. It dissolves it very well. Yeah, see, but you talk about frozen pipes. What side of the meter was that on? If you were on? They're inside the residences. You were going inside the residences. No, we weren't. Oh. Those are homeowner issues. We had to shut the water off so the repairs could oh, be they made. Oh, was shut the water off so they could get it repaired. Yeah, okay. we did have one on Chadwell where the line froze in the yard. So. Oh, really? But. You know, we got to, uh, we actually called one of our other divisions who has a machine that we could send up the line and thaw it from the inside. Hmm. So. Thank you, Steve. All right. Thank you, sir. Kobe. You, uh, you have my report. I don't have a whole lot to add to that, but. Uh, I want to call attention to the shop hop this weekend on Saturday where several of the shops in downtown St. Genevieve will be having promotions and specials going on. Um, so hopefully with good weather, we should have a good crowd out this weekend to participate with that. Uh, the item where I mentioned Facebook uh, ad campaign and the charts, those are on the top of the second page. And it actually, I consolidate down to one chart that shows the organic and paid reach for some of the posts that we've had. As you can see uh, on the right side of that chart, we've had a we have a uh, a paid campaign out there that has a uh, a reach of about six to nine thousand people per day, and has been reflected also in our website numbers this month. Uh, have been up dramatically over previous marches. So, hopefully, that's out there getting the word out for a, a big spring ahead for us. Um, and even this week, we're having a good week of numbers. I think some some places are on spring break already in terms of schools up the line and uh, up till today's rain. We've been having a good week uh, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The uh, ferry had been down for about a week uh, due to the high river levels, and they plan to be open on Friday. So they, they should back up and running tomorrow, they called uh, this afternoon and told us that. Uh, I met with the county commission today uh, along with Amanda Hutchings at uh, Harold, from Harold's Bees to talk about uh, the use of the parking lot that the county has uh, uh, off of Market Street where the community services building used to be. Um, there's been, she had some interest in putting some vendors or some having something of her event in late June in that area. And then also when Jura de Fet takes place, I'd also you know, figured w was that an area that could be utilized for something. 
And I think the commission wants to take the policy of posting emergency services in there only. Uh, so they don't have to deal with vendors, don't have to deal with insurance, and then, so that way they could have the uh, uh, you know police presence and the uh, ambulance in case they need a uh, uh, trailer for to cool off people during the warm weather events. So that's kind of a, a plan they came up with for that area, which I think is a good policy uh, to utilize that that spot. Uh, when Alder Woman Johnson asked about uh, PPE, it kind of reminded me we have a. A lot of groups coming in uh, in April. We have about six school tours that it look like are lining up, and uh, one cruise line is going to bring a bus up from Chester. So we'll definitely be using a lot of disinfectant if Gary can deliver some Lysol for us or whatever we need to, to get that in the building. Because, and I know one of the cruise lines uh, I talked to has specified that they would like to see uh, a lot of cleaning take place before their people come in and out there. They're, in fact, when our step-on guide goes to their bus, they're going to require a rapid COVID test before the step-on guide even deals with passengers. So, so some places out there still taking steps, and we want to make sure we do that in the Welcome Center as well to keep people safe. Uh, you have on your agenda the Viking contract, uh, second reading tonight. Uh, so since the first reading, I've talked with the, the contact at Viking a few times. There had been some wording related to standard operating procedures that they had never provided us, and that wording had been eliminated from the, the agreement. Uh, there also was some wording about uh, uh, that they could take a discounted payment if the billing was late, and that uh, wording has also been eliminated uh, from the agreement. Uh, there was, had been some concern about whether how step-on guides were going to apply to the Viking tours. Viking is not going to utilize any local step-on guides, so that uh, that area has been cleaned up. I know there's some uncertainty about how that was handled. They're actually going to contract with Dennis Stromat to serve as step-on guide throughout their tour. And then lastly, uh, we're going to work with uh, maybe some other uh, cities and local people about developing kind of a risk management plan that we'll have in place uh, that's one thing Viking is looking having in their agreement as well, so that if something does happen in an emergency process, we have uh, steps in place to help them handle that. So, are there any questions? So we should, um, the county decline the uh, parking lot for the county festival for vendors. Mm -hmm. Are you helping out with identifying some other locations for those vendors? Oh, yeah. And, well, Amanda, has, and she's just been talking with Pam also. Um, so she's talking about their vendor deadlines in the middle of April. They're looking at having maybe 50 vendors and food trucks. So on, on theory, we have an idea that this, the footprint for the event through the downtown will be almost as much as your event. So she's had a lot of feedback from people who want to take part in this event. And she's going to have music in Lions Park, and that's kind of where she's planning to have a food truck row down that area as well. So, so. we're thinking road closures yeah. will be requested? Yeah. Okay. yeah, she'll be, she's going to come up with the vendor totals in the middle of April and then come to the board with kind of her idea and also get with the downtown businesses and kind of let them know what's going on with the event. Okay. And we'll, we'll make sure, I mean, the safety issues, the, the police and fire chiefs are aware of all the things yes okay. yeah we actually uh, had put an email out about uh, second street and just making sure what needs to be done to keep enough uh, roadway open great and we'll probably follow some of the jury effect plan since they kind of have the book down about how to leave enough space on the streets great thank you mm -hmm. can you remind me when that uh, yeah, Harold's event it's uh, June 26th and June 27th Saturday Sunday I think there's going to be a movie in the park on the 26th also. Her event is, uh, I think it's 10 to, 10 to 4 on Saturday and shuts down a little earlier on Sunday. So, I, mean, I want to thank you very much for all the hard work and due diligence that you did on this, listening to people in the community and getting back to them. And I really appreciate that. Good work on the bike. Well, thanks. And Bob Mueller has been very helpful as well. In terms he? Excellent. Of <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. is that where they got? Uh, Viking? No. The, oh, the, the first one coming in is uh, American Duchess. Mm -hmm. They dock in Chester. Uh, they are uh, capping their tour at 28 people that they can take on an excursion. Um, so uh, and when Viking comes, they'll be coming next year. So this is a plan for 2022 and 23. They're looking ahead, and they're going to dock in St. Louis, 
kind of the midpoint of a two-week excursion up and down the river, and then they'll come down to St. Genevieve out of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Toby. All right, thanks. Is there any COVID discussion we need to have? I think we had it. Yeah. We had it. <laughs> Good deal. Any committee reports? So if somebody wants to write a check to benefit the park and make it a 501c3, they have to write it to the Community Foundation of the Ozarks. They can mail it here and then we'll forward it. But don't write it out to the city, write it out to the foundation. And then that way we can make that deposit. Okay. And it's the Community Foundation of the Ozarks. Yes. Mm. And I believe you need to put like St. Genevieve, St. Genevieve Parks. Parks. Yeah. Or you can even put St. Genevieve Parks and Recreation Fund, but you may not, may not have enough line there to find, fill all that in with. Do you think we want to get out there on social media and explain that? Because that's a Well, excellent. we will. I, I wanted to clear those okay. questions up with Happy because we didn't have our park board meeting on this past Monday. And I want to try to get the the information out there before you know by the weekend if I can. It's a great, uh, it's a great opportunity for people. Yeah, so I wanted to kind of clear those questions up, and then we'll get all that yeah, that's what we were going to discuss at Monday's meeting. Now it'll be Monday's meeting. Okay. Yeah. So you have something for planning and zoning? No, sir. So the Heritage Commission met. And did they? We, had a, we had a good meeting, and things went through swimmingly. And um, I came chomping at the bit to hear what they were going to do at Audubon's, and they came, and they slightly revised it. They're going to come back with us, but uh, we're all excited to see what they come up with yeah. as they move forward. So great meeting. Thank you, David. Very good. I think Gen TV is going to meet finally after about the last oh, really? six, seven months that we just didn't meet. But yeah. We COVID. had plenty of good uh, work being done by one or two of the board members. Super. So well, one of them. So we're figuring on meeting on Tuesday. Thank good. All righty. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we uh, go to the consent agenda, Pam, you need to pass out some paperwork from our closed session. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comments. No public comments right now. Mm -hmm. you, Joe, you want to comment now or you want to wait until we have a... No, we I'll, I'll comment. And, okay. And then get out. First of all, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've, I've sort of addressed this group, but I just want to thank all of you in this room for what you do for St. Genevieve. Uh, I've been involved uh, more than I probably like to admit over the years, and I've been very optimistic of where St. Genevieve is at the moment, even during these kind of uncertain times. So thank you for all you've done. And I think we're really at a good place even during these pandemic moments what we have all struggled through. One of the things I know is that making business decisions is very difficult. There's a fine line you, you um, have to walk when you're making decisions, when you're doing buildings and and putting out bids. Um, one of the things that I know you take in consideration is the impact of doing business locally and how it, how it has a rippling effect throughout the community and also has an emotional effect throughout the community. When we sort of, um, and the word is not take care of our own, but I think you know what I mean by that, a dollar spent. Um, in a community has a rippling effect and there's a theoretical, you know, in small towns, it could have a multiplier effect from three to six dollars. So whether it's a, a local company, the, if their labor factor, their tax base, the, the business that they do, I think you all are, are, are certainly smart enough and aware enough uh, how that has a positive influence. So I just I um, want to encourage you where the opportunity presents itself, and I know there's uh, one that you're currently deciding, uh, that there are some really good local options, and uh, I know these decisions are tough, 
but the importance of, of doing business with people in St. Genevieve when we can, I think we all benefit. And I'm not here to sell anything, but they have bought a few mattresses. <laughs> Thanks again for everything all of you do. Appreciate it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. <clears throat> Takes us to uh, old business. And this is the second reading of bill number 4415, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an, uh, into and execute an agreement with Viking Mississippi LLC to assist and coordinate tours. Motion to approve. Second. Can I have a roll call, please? Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderwoman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokers. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderwoman Arbister. Yes. Eight yes, zero no's. Bill number 4415 now becomes ordinance 4344. Thank you. Takes us to new business. Phase one police department remodel bid discussion. So I can highlight what's in the staff report. We uh, opened bids. We budgeted 261,000 for the work. We had three contractors, and that should be attached to your uh, to your report. Uh, bids came in from 312,000 to 444,000. Uh, the low bid is 51,000 over our budget, what we budgeted for this year. Uh, so because of that, and uh, I will say the grant from Legacy Contracting Group is here, in case you have any questions about his bid. Um, I believe Mr. Donzi is under the weather and unable to attend. Uh, so the third bidder was way, way high, and I think you know, it's out of the conversation. But you've got two that uh, they came in pretty close together. So because we're <laughs> over budget, um, we've got options. You can accept the lowest responsible bidder, um, rebudget the funds from capital projects. Uh, you can accept another bid. You can reject all of the bids. Uh, you can postpone the decision until we research and see if there's any CARES Act money that possibly could be uh, attached to this project. Uh, we've been trying to figure out a way that we that things like that could apply because it is new construction. It is improving things in the back. It is making it safer for the employees. I just don't know how this CARES Act money will apply. I know how the previous CARES Act money, so this uh, American Relief Plan money, has, has, will have different strings to it. Um, or if you got any other recommendations, throw them out there. So I have you the, the increase in, in uh, cost of above budgeted number we, we think is attributed to material cost and pandemic impact and you do we not we don't know we just know what the what these prices are compared to what we had originally anticipated them to be based on the size of the project in that part of the building uh that they're you know when we talked to the contractors when they came in for the uh the, the pre-bid meeting everybody said prices have gone up expect that um, one of the problems that they have is holding those prices for anything longer than seven days so that's that's an issue as well uh, but it's volatile. Uh, these are the numbers that uh, I think because there's so much more work that's done in that end, even though we took a percentage, uh, what we based, what Steve based on, on that section of the building, it's just, yeah, I suspect much of it has to do with the, uh, the increase in, in cost. So to postpone, we risk a further increase uh, for our consideration. Well, because if you look at the, you know, for the whole building to get all of this done, and that would have included the lobby. It was 377,000, a little over that. Um, now we're looking at just for the police department side, we're over yeah. 300,000. Know, without looking at plans side by side, I mean, 
um, it's not all in material costs. You know, there were some things done differently. Um, I can tell you we need to do something. Um, I'm not in favor of a 50, you know, some thousand dollar budget increase. Um, my suggestion, which is common practice in projects like this, is, uh, and we did it on the first bid, we went in, we negotiated with the bidder, uh, we reduced the cost almost $100,000 in just value uh, engineering. Um, I'm almost certain without seeing all the documents that this could be done again and get us down to within budget. Uh, Without, without compromising uh, scope of work, you think, Bob? Well, like I said, without seeing the plan side by side with that happening and stuff, I mean, but in all my years of construction, that is common practice. Um, it's a good economic <coughs> way to get things in line. This is not the first project that's come in over budget, but uh, if we keep throwing more money at this thing, uh, it's not going to go away. Uh, the building might go away if we don't do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that, that's a great approach if we don't risk you know, material prices rising on the back side of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would also buy us a little time to figure out if we can use any of the care. Yeah. Yeah, true. If, if, because we still don't know exactly what we can use those funds for. Right. And I would really like to know if any of this do. qualifies. Well, how, when will we, when will be some definite, uh, when, when, potentially not till end of April. And they, yeah, Treasury's working on it now. Supposed to get the, their whatever they're discussing, and they're discussing it with the uh, National Association of Counties and the National League of Cities, trying to come up with how to best describe what is allowed or not allowed. Um, but it's going to take a while to get that done. So what we've heard is end of April. Yeah, I can tell you as far as from a material side, dealing with it every day, the bulk of the increases have already happened. But that's not saying there isn't going to be more, but the bulk of the increases uh, have happened. Um, you know, in our particular business, they're up 188% over a year ago. Um, now are we close to the top? Um, you know, it all depends on demand. You know, there's a huge demand out there. Uh, I had a friend call me here uh, this week and stuff, and he had bought a house six months ago, paid 280 thousand dollars far put it on the market sold one day for 320 you know that type of stuff is going to catch up with us um, you know but I, I truly think I mean uh, we could negotiate this um, I'm going to go back with what the Rozier said earlier and stuff I truly think we need to look uh, nothing against anyone or anyone's qualifications or anything but you know, for $1,400, um, you know, it's always been the city's policy to buy local. Uh, I have to watch what I say being a local business owner and stuff, but I do believe uh, we should go back, we should negotiate, uh, let them bring some things to the table. You know, I was strongly against paying more engineering fees. Uh, I still am, uh, but I think we need to go back. We need to take a look at it. There's always things that could be changed that all of these subcontractors can look at, give us recommendations just like they did the first time. Uh, I would almost bet we could take a substantial amount of that budget uh, difference away from the project, not compromise the well, whole we, project. We can't change scope or we'd have to put it out for bid again, right? Well, I mean, but why didn't we tie, you know, I have to ask this question because it's been bugging me. Why didn't we tie the scope of those things together with what we had done in the past? Why didn't we take that into consideration, sit down with the, you know, the architect, sit down with, you know, um, you know, the previous bidder and tie those things together because that's what we were supposed to be doing was having a plan that fit what we could afford to spend. I, I you know, I, I don't understand that. And I can't explain it more than we looked at what the, you know, the previous, uh, ex the previous bids were 
based it on that portion of the of the project, uh, and we're looking at just a year and a half ago uh, that, that that bid came in, and that's the percentage. So that's what we based the uh, what we thought the bid would come in on. Because I think it was even under under bid uh, amount when they when you first did it. Yeah, it was, it was over time. budget and stuff. But I mean, when we went back and negotiated, you know, we were down in the 220, 230 range and stuff. And I, I but that's all water under the bridge. Yeah, but. and and I hadn't heard about that. I just heard. I just saw what the final, what that the bid amount was, or what the bids came in as. Right. Um, and we would we would have done, or we will do value engineering as well. Anyway, with whoever the low bidder is, but or whoever you choose, but. Mm -hmm. That would be done after the fact. That's how I've done it in, in the past. We can go back up front and say, because we know we had an add alternate in there where they're going to use PEX instead of copper for the water lines, and that will drop everybody's price about $1,400. But that was even. That's an even drop. Uh, we can get back in and look at what those individual items are, work with Steve to make sure we're staying within the plans, um, and then try to bring you back a better number. That's my suggestion. I mean, I, I've seen this hundreds of times, and uh, I, I think that's a wise move and stuff. And then we can buy some time, uh, you know, to see where these additional funds may come in to help. So the one thing also that, that I will say from, from the city's point of view is we look at everybody's bidding on the same thing, bringing that price to us. We can, we can amend that, but usually you have to choose somebody and then we go back and we amend that. Because I don't, you know, we can, we can we're, we're getting into some variables now that are not even. Everybody was at the, right. had the opportunity to be at the pre bid meeting, <coughs> had the opportunity to see what the plans are, had the opportunity to ask questions, had the opportunity to also receive any addendums. You make a choice based on that, that's what you submitted was the, those items. So going back to each individual contractor now and saying, well, what are we going to do about this? Now that we know what the bottom number is, you know, what everybody's numbers are, are we going to get uh, a fair price? Are we going to get a, you know, how, how do we judge what they, what they submit? So that's one thing to also look at. You don't have to make a decision tonight, but that's one of the considerations that, that I've looked at in the past is everybody bid it based on the same, uh, same issues. Now we're going to go back and ask, what can you do extra for us? And I don't know if that's uh, as fair. That's commonly done. So, so what, uh, I do yeah. have a question, sorry to interrupt. It seems like the, the only real, I mean, there's a slight price difference, but there's a calendar weeks difference in the bids. Is that, is that the expected performance time? Yeah. So, so the Donzi yeah, would be time. completed in 12 weeks, 12 but the legacy would take 17, 17 weeks working inside City Hall yeah. to save $1,453. Right. Right. Yeah. Happy, the other number that to me is out of whack is so that we spent 9% of the total budget you know, on engineering fees. Um, that's out of whack you know, for a project this size and stuff. Uh, <coughs> You know, and, and we've got to add that to our total budget also and stuff. I mean, that should come out of our budget as amount as our engineering fees, uh, which were another uh, $21,000, uh, 13000 on the original set and almost 8000 on this set. So we've got $21,000 more in this project. But, you know, I don't want to downplay the importance of doing this because the project, we need to do something. Um, well, are we all in agreement with that? Because there, were, there was some yeah. talk about a, yeah. another building and and all that, but looking at looking at that, I mean, it's just for me, it's not another building. I, yeah. I, I thought we had moved past that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought we were in this building right here. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'd, and I looked at other buildings and stuff, but I mean, we're you know, we're talking about spending three to four times more money. Right. We're going to have upwards of a million dollars. I'm going to ask in about two seconds. Right. You always got to do something. I mean, it's probably a better building, but. Yeah, but this is it. Yeah. There's a lot of old buildings in this town that have been here a lot of years. I mean, it's an old building, but the bones are good. You know, and, and the structure's good, so. And Bob, I, I totally get what you're saying. I get you're frustrated, but I don't think anybody, when we started looking at all this again, what, a year and a half ago, yeah. that would have predicted that costs would rise. Oh, right. 
So I think that, I mean, I think that's a lot of it. And I agree it's frustrating, but I do think we need to move ahead. And if we can find some funding for it, that, you know, additional funding somewhere, that'd be great. But I think that it, if, if it has to, it comes out of capital improvement. So we've got, to, we've got to do something. We've got to go. We've got to move on. And I respect your opinion and your expertise as well. We did put a committee together on this, and they, ca and they came together. And I think they even have a recommendation. If they want well, to I mean, it, pandemic and, and material transportation cost and, and all the other things that come with that were unforeseen mm -hmm. at that time. So, I mean, I think what we put at risk, I, I think we should ask people to sharpen their pencil if they can. I have no problem with that. But the longer we wait, and if we're talking yeah. about waiting in seven day blocks, if, if seven days a <laughs> crucial block of time mm -hmm. when contractors won't guarantee a price past seven days at a time. That's not a realistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and I would have to defer you. I, I can't speak to that. I, really think, well, you can. Tonight? I think so too. I think we. I, I, I think it should. Could I press the committee for a recommendation for a contractor? Well, the committee hasn't met no one. Right. Yet. <laughs> well, we have a lot. I think it's a, the committee's done it. Just admitted that. <laughs> I think the board needs to decide who's going to win this contract. Well, I, I think. Yeah. I think Jeff makes a good point that uh, in in Mark alluded to, and we're talking about. Uh, 14, calculated, calculated four, weeks. Yeah, yeah. fourteen hundred and fifty-three hours. You know, uh, to to eliminate uh, five, five weeks. weeks. So, what's the cost to the city? Cost of doing business, inconvenience to staff. Well, we're also talking about our public safety. Right. Yep. Our public safety. Right. You know, Great point. I want to yeah. talk to Eric for a minute. Hello again. Yeah. Eric, I take it you've been part of this whole planning stage and discussion and stuff. I mean, uh, you know, I know we talked about a while back about how displaced you guys are going to be and what all was going to go on with that. I mean, uh, I think your comment back was then was you're mostly in your cars and stuff. But well, we have the capability of doing all of our paperwork in the car. I mean, there's still a substantial physical presence we'll need to have here, and we'll have to prioritize all of the work so that we have one portion of the building done so that we can move our evidence there and make sure it's secure while the rest of the project is going on because we have to we have to maintain custody of that um, so I mean there's still a, a function that will require us to be here and, and uh, be present but for the most part as far as the paperwork and the ability to, to respond to a call and, and take care of the business that needs to be taken care of we can do that from our car but there is uh, Gary has offered up the, the park house where we can set up at least a computer station and printer and whatnot to, to do the day-to-day -day stuff that we need to do. Um, so the the time frame, it, you know, certainly does come into to effect there. But So that additional time frame, you know, that we're talking about now, I mean... I mean, it's just that. It's an additional time frame. Um, right. I mean, it's not just us that will be affected by this. It's another, you know, several weeks that the the other staff that will be remaining here will will be dealing with. That'll be pretty well closed off, though, won't it? Pretty well, but the bathrooms are shared. I mean, there there's right. going to be some work that will affect the staff that stays here, as far as the restrooms and and the water and and all of that. If this, if a decision were made tonight on a contractor. What's the potential like for for starting it? Is it next month, two months? Is it an immediate start or? Well, I think if you'd have like a better chance of doing what Bob said, then if you pick the contractor, then going back and sharpening the pencil. I think. But you have one contractor to, to work with. Because mm -hmm. what I was getting at is, will this interfere with a time in the calendar year that is more busy? Busy in some way for our department. I, I don't know if during like, the summer, right? Are, you know, yeah, and and sunset. on the flip side of that is a time of year that's busy for the contractors. Yeah. You know, as far as their oh, availability and, and right coming to, right now. you know, so do we have those that. time frames of the job that the contractors get? Those contractors. or did we? Yeah, contractors. That was one of the requirements in the day. Oh, they had to name a time, yeah. so we could ask them possibly to shorten that time some 
also. Do you think that's a yeah, it's, it's, for you? it's more than doable. One of the biggest things, like what well, I accounted for, I put some and our time on the front end as well. You know, lead time with materials, setting up contracts, getting you know performance payment bond in place, setting all of that front end paperwork up. It's part of that 17 weeks. So you know, you could take that front end off and then say, okay, you have 12 weeks for this duration. A lot of that stuff. We'd be more than willing, you know, work with you guys mm -hmm. to make sure we're not causing any damage. Right. That way, yeah, you can keep your operations. And the 17 weeks, like we discussed, was provided by the contractor. There wasn't like a time period stamped by the architect. That's why. Yeah. See, I think you see on there anywhere from 12 weeks up to, I believe the high bid was 21 weeks. Yeah. 20. 20. Well, Bob, I respect uh, your perspective for sure. I'm just, I'm starting to get the feeling like it's time, and we have to have a bottom because it's like if we don't do, we're we're always going to find a reason to to not. Right. Do I mean, like I agree with you. It's time. It's it was time a year and a half ago to do something. Um, so the question is, could we award? To could we select an award and then go back? That's I mean, are, are we within? Yeah. Our, so so what, you should what you're doing now is, is picking the lowest and best bid, not necessarily the, to the penny, uh, but whatever you think is the best uh, contractor and the best bid, considering all the factors, and one of them would be the time differential. I mean, that's, um, uh, the, the, that that should be a significant. Consideration, especially since the price of the two lowest bidders is the same. And speaking just from personal experience, I'm having my office remodeled now, and I'd like to have it done already. And it's, <laughs> it's going to be the end of next week. But, but you know, it's disruptive, as the chief was saying. So, so the bottom line to your question, the answer to your question is to you select the 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 best bidder. Then you can always work with that person about materials and and, and different changes as the project goes forward. And and, and just just as you would if you wanted to increase the price after the, the project is finished, you want to put some add-ons. But what you're doing, is, as Captain said, you need to select based upon the the bid information that they all had, and, and that you're comparing apples to apples. And then wherever you're selected, that's who you're going to work with for the add-ons or the subtractions after that point. And, and so what you'd want to do if, if you're going to move forward with it today is select the bidder. And we're going to need to have a written contract right. that I have to review, and we can. I would expect we'd have that for your next meeting, and we could even advance it to a special meeting if you're in a big hurry to get it started. Um, but I mean, two weeks. I mean, I don't know what what Don's yeah. situation is for the, the contract and how much of a rush it is. But we can certainly be back in the, in two weeks or you know the next meeting to to get that approved at the next at the next meeting. So Eric, you've reviewed the last set of plans. I mean, yes, sir. Is everything? Yeah, um, you know, some of the additional costs could be now we're in, in the new plans, we're relocating two bathrooms and adding an additional bathroom, which was not on here before. I mean, we cut out some of the other things like an a, a entrance into this room from outside. You know, it's it's now a hallway from, from the backside, which saves some costs there. Um, but yeah, the, the plans, I think, are for the majority of our use are, are, are just fine. So, and we've addressed all of the mechanical, heating, cooling, electrical. <clears throat> to, to my knowledge, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm an advocate for selection of a contractor at this meeting and uh, working with that contractor, whoever that, that would be, to see what they can do. As and far as opinion price. is? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to look at, uh, I didn't do the math, but I mean, if we do a breakdown on five weeks lost into 1453 what's that daily amount i think it's probably trivial uh, i'm an advocate for award to Dante uh the price listed with, with the weeks that they specify agree yeah i agree with you. would a uh, can you make a motion would the contract uh, hold them to the projected weeks because you know if yeah, they get into this project and start adding four weeks you know yeah i always i always want to have a penalty provision in, in my construction contracts to have a date that's always a contention point <laughs> between because the contractor 
we're gonna we're gonna have certain uh, ex exceptions for acts of God or you know riots and all that. <coughs> Uh, but we're going to want to have some sort of penalty provision for them to go, for them to hit that, because it it, it is important, uh, especially in a project of your city hall. So yes, that, that will, there will be a provision. Now what that number will be, uh, it'll be negotiable, but that's going to be part of the contract, no matter who you select. So I think everybody did a great job on this, and I think I thank the contractors for all their hard work to put things together. I think looking at the schematics and the data provided. I'm going to make a motion that we select Donzi of St. Genevieve for this. Do I have a second? You do. I second that. Ready to roll call and all in favor? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sounds like Perfect. any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Is there any other business? Does that need two readings? No, no it's not on the agenda. No, no, no. 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 Yeah. Well, there's no other business. I'd like to have a motion to uh, go into closed session for real estate discussion. Make a motion to go into closed session for real estate discussion. A second. Okay. Have a roll call, please. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderwoman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Joker. Yes. Alderman Eidman. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Trent. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Alderwoman Arbister. <laughs> yes. Motion carries 651. We have a few minutes break before we... Two minutes. Clear, clear the... Uh... <laughs>